Lord, we give our praise. Thank you, Jesus, that we still alive. Thank you, Jesus, that we still have time to come and pray and magnify His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus. All right. If you have the Bible, would you open up in me? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. Yes, sir. Please open up your Bible. Yes. And today, the sermon title will be A Moment of Life. A Moment of Life. A Moment of Life. So the book of Ecclesiastes is the, uh, the book of King Solomon. He wrote this, the son of King David. So let me ask you this. For younger generation, I know we all experience this, but I don't know about all the older generation. How many of you ever went to the Sixth Frag? How many? Six Let me see flag. Oh, six flag. Six flag. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Or some of you, you might, you might saw through TV or the show, you know, about Six Flag, or, you know, talking about the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Many people, you know, all the children, young and old, man, woman, when they jump on a roller coaster, you know how we go up, you know, and you, you hear the, 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 the sound, click, 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 right? And everybody smile, excited, you know, kind of, yes, yes, this is my moment. It's slowly go up, go up, go up, you know. People pump up, get excited, you know. And some people wave and happy. When you get to the certain point, what happens? You know, like when you get to the top, now it's ready to kick off. Now what happened? When you get to the top, now you start the, you know, what you call it, the card, whatever it is, when you sit, your sit, right? It's going down. Now it's your emotional, your will, everything is start changing. Now when it start coming down, and you know, you, you, most of the time you might hear all the, everybody in there will scream. Ah! Right? Freak out, screaming. In tears. Now, you know, I experienced it. I, be honest, I don't really like to ride that kind of thing. It's, it makes me nervous. I'm screaming myself. All right it, now. You know, I'm going, yeah, I'm here. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready to roll, you know. When the thing's going down, like, you'll be like, ah, you're shaking, you know, you're crying. Call it on Jesus. You know, <laughs> this is a, when I look at this, it's no different in our journey with Jesus. The same thing with our Christian life, with our spiritual walk. You know, sometimes as we go up, you know, seeing everything just fine, you know, no problem, smiling, happy moment, you know. But there's a time that life seems like everything go down here. We freak out, we scared, we nervous, we cry, we tremble, we fear. When things going down. So that's why I come up and I pray, I ask the Lord, what kind of sermon that you, what kind of word that you want to speak to your people this morning. That's why the Lord gave me the, the lesson, a moment of life. Every single one of us, that's the matter, young and old. All of us, we have a moment. Just like how King Solomon described, he, 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 he talked in his, in, in his writing. There is a time of everything and in a, in a season for every activity under the heaven. There's a time to be born, it's time to die. It's time to plant, it's time to uproot. It's time to kill, it's time to heal. It's time to tear down, it's time to, to build. It's time to whip, it's time to laugh, it's time to mourn, it's time to dance. So the Bible tells us clearly, so everything has its own season and everything is under the heaven. Life, our life just like roller coaster. There's no such thing on earth, on this planet, that everything will go smooth. Right? Would you agree with me? Yes, just like the Bible. There's a time to love, it's time to weep, it's time to mourn, it's time to dance. Nobody gonna dance every single minute. Nobody gonna laugh all the time. If you laugh all the time, you're crazy. Right? <laughs> Would you agree? If you laugh, and no reason to laugh all the time. There's something wrong with you, you laugh all the time. But then, then when you cry, you laugh, it's normal, right? So don't ever think when you cry and you, you tire or you, you mourn, don't think like, well, you know, it's something strange with you. It's a part of life. That's what the Bible said. I didn't say it. The Bible said, verse 4, a time to laugh, a time to laugh, 
In time to mourn and in time to death. It's a part of life. Life just like the wave ocean, up and down. When you look at the ocean, it's not, you know, there's no, you know, sometimes, yes, the ocean will just stay still. There's no wave, no movement. But all of a sudden, the wave just come. Same thing in life. You know, sometimes our life just silent. There's nothing. No movement or nothing. Be chill, be calm, be, be, be at peace. And all of a sudden, the wave just come. Unexpected. This is a part of life. It's a part of life. You know, sometimes it's something happened in our life that we don't even expect about it. That we even think about it. It just come. Remember the story when Jesus disciple in the boat with Jesus that night. Jesus was chilling, Jesus was cool and calm, at peace, everything. All of a sudden, the storm just come. And the, the disciple was just so terrified, so afraid. They even asked to Jesus, Master, whom you care about us, we're about to sink. In other words, we're about to die. The boat about to sink down. You know, sometimes in life like that, all of a sudden, we didn't even do nothing. We at peace, we cool, we calm, we chill, everything. All of a sudden, the wave, the storm just come and hit us. We, we don't know what direction. It can, can, the storm can come to the left, to the right. But thank God. Did you know the story? Even in the midst of the storm, in that moment, Jesus still sit. Jesus still in the boat with them. And I want to encourage all of us. Yes, we might hit the storm left and right, so many directions, but we thank God. It doesn't matter what circumstances that we are facing, but Jesus is still with us. Amen? Come on, be God for you. Come on, church. Jesus is still with us. Yes, Lord. It doesn't matter what our circumstances speaking to us. It doesn't matter how we feel. It doesn't matter how the culture of society it happened in this world. But Jesus still sits on the throne. Jesus still be God of all. Yes. That's not how the psalm is saying. He's the Lord of all. Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. Yes. Everything. Everything. We praise God yes. that we know that we believe the living God. Amen. Amen. So the Bible tells us clearly, King Solomon, in verse chapter three, verse four, tells us clearly a time to. Weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. It's a moment. All of us, we have a moment of celebration. You know, sometimes we sad, we angry, we mad, we tired. It's a part of human life. We not, we are living on earth. This is not happening. We know for a fact and for sure. Don't let any, some kind of movie, whatever it is, entertainment fool us. You know, when we look at a movie, movie in, in a movie star, sometimes we think their life is just so smooth. Walk in the red carpet, dressed in fancy clothes, looking handsome and beautiful. That's not always true inside of human life. Uh -huh. Yes, the outside, your outward appearance, people might look just look like, wow, they, they, they made it. They got it in this life. But not always the case. You know, because life is not just about the way we look, the way our appearance, the way we touch our flesh, our body. Life is combined with three different things, our spirit and soul and our body. But the most important thing, you know, God not just look, God is not just only concerned the way we look, our appearance, our body, our flesh, but he concerned about our spirit. Amen. He concerned about our heart condition. Amen. Like how I taught in Sunday school. No, Pond asked me, when things, you know, when we wait, we wait for something, when we're in trouble, how we can make it shorter. We can make the time shorter because God set everything just according to his time frame. For us, just re remain, maintain, keep on going no matter what. Keep on going. So, I found this code through internet. It said like this. We all have our days where we feel we can't survive. Sometimes dreams are shattered. Mm -hmm. Friendship may fall apart. Uh -huh. Loved one may hurt us. Mm -hmm. Finance may worry us. Sickness may overtake us. We may ever 
lose lost people who love, but God will always be there to guide us through ever the toughest of time. Never lose faith. Hold on hope. Trust in God always. Yes. yes. Trust in God always. Trust in God. You know, sometimes it's not easy to trust in God. You know, I can give you a illustration, give example, right? I can show you this. It, this not, this not, it's not even a part of my sermon. But our preaching is I have to follow the Holy Spirit how he did me. I will show you how to trust in the Lord. This illustration right here. Do you see a chair right here? Yes, sir. Not just only me see it. You know, all of us, when the, the musician, whoever come, or even the first time visitor come, it doesn't matter how big your side, when you see in a chair, and you don't know nothing about a chair. Nothing about it at all. You know, just, oh, even the small like this, you just come, and you can sit down, put your waist on it, without any concern. That's right. This is how we trust in the Lord. Uh-huh. You didn't come, you know, we're not coming, not try to expect, try to check on, oh, is the, the, the leg kind of small, you know? I'm not sure it's going to hold my waist. If some, you know, if some of you, like, you were like, you know, some of us can be like, you know, 200 pounds, like, oh, I don't think this can hold me, hold me up. But most people, they don't, they don't come around, check the chair like that. You know, they just, you know, come, just, just sit down. People not even look, try to look, oh, 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 is, is the chair is stable, it's okay. Nobody do that. But I want us to think like this, even the chair have no life, no power, no nothing. It's just a dead material, whatever it is, plastic, steel, whatever it is. We still put our trust on, on the chair. Yes. When we come and we just want to jump on that, you can jump two, three times. Uh -huh. And you still have no concern for whatsoever. But what about God? Uh -huh. The living God yes. that he created of all, he knows everything. Can we trust in him? Yes. Can we trust in him? Yes. We need to put our trust in him. We need to learn to realize depend on God alone. You see the word that we say? Christ, the cornerstone. He's the Lord. There's no other name. That's why we need to learn how to trust in him. All of us, we have a moment of life. You know, even myself. Last, uh, I just came home from Rockford last night. Mm -hmm. I went uh, on Friday. We have a family meeting mm -hmm. about my sister's situation. And also, my mom is getting old. Most of you know that my sister has stayed full cancer. Anything can happen in, in her life. You know, we talk about things, we talk about struggle, we talk about a lot of things. It's not easy. I can realize, I just taught, I just shared in Sunday school. Maybe this, this, this moment is the hardest time for me to see our loved ones suffer and die. We all go through this. You know, some of you, you might experience in your family. Some of your loved ones suffer, or someone's already passed away. Struggle with many things in life. Everybody have their moment. But what about when we face the storm? What about when we face the challenges, difficulty, that we, we, it's beyond our mind to understand, beyond our strength to handle, how we deal with it. So that's why we, the reason, that's why we come to church every Sunday, that the reason we come to a prayer meeting, even Wednesday or Friday, it depends on where, whatever church, the people program, the people attend to. The reason why we hang on, why we press on. Sometimes we feel like we don't want to praise him, just like the, the song, uh, uh, praise worship song, little Hannah say, sing, say like this, sometimes we don't feel like to praise him. It's not about how we feel, but we have to be obedient and trust in him. Because God created us to praise and worship Him. Amen. I have to be honest. Not every Sunday, since I've been preaching and serving the Lord for 20 years, it doesn't mean like every Sunday I'm on fire lift up all the time. Mm -hmm. Some Sunday I come, I'm tired. Uh -huh. Some Sunday I come, my mind is wandering, my heart is not in the right place. Uh -huh. 
I have to be honest with you. All right now. You know, it's like, you know, every Sunday, everything just smooth all the time. No. no. But you know what? It doesn't matter how we feel inside. But we have to press on. Yeah. But we have to press on. We have to press it through. Yeah. We don't allow the, the circumstances, the negative feeling, try to block us, try to stop us, to press on to God present. That's how we get all the solution in the answer. When we worship Jesus at his feet, when we really enter into the holy of holy, we don't want just dancing and jumping around out here in the outer court. We need to enter, enter the presence of God. We need to be at the holy of the holy place, the most holy place. That's when the presence of God dwells. That's when the Jesus sits in the throne. Let me tell you, I know some of you might think, what does it mean by the presence of God? What does it mean by the word glory of God? Or the presence of the, of the holy of the holy, or the most holy? You heard the preaching preach, but sometimes we don't really experience in our life. But let me tell you, when we get to the presence of God, at Jesus' name, whatever term that people might use, holy of holy, the most holy, holy ground, I'm telling you, when we worship Jesus, when we come to him like that, that's when we receive strength. That's when we receive hope, comfort, healing. The Holy Spirit will move within us. So I want to encourage us, all of us, we have a moment in life. It's not easy. No, it's not. I can, I can be honest with you. Sometimes I still cry. Sometimes, like I told, told the church last, last Sunday, I don't have all solution in life. I'm still facing challenges, difficulty in my, my personal life. Yes. In my family. Yes. We all do. Yes. It doesn't matter what kind of shape, what kind of form, what kind of thing that people try to cover. All of us live inside of us. We still struggle with some certain thing in life. But we praise God because God is a faithful God. He knows everything that happened in our life. Now, the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. I will read in King James and also in American Standard Version. It said like this, For our light, our friction, which is but for a moment, works for us. Far more exceeding and internal ways for the glory. What the word affliction mean? The word affliction mean illness, sickness, disease, condition, disorder, complaint, infirmity, weakness. That's the word affliction mean. The Bible says, even though we've been through all this stuff, and the Bible used the word, but for a moment. It's just a moment. Everybody will go through this. A moment of life. Because the Bible tells us clearly. In American Standard Version. Say like this. The same words. Second Corinthians. Chapter 4 verse 17. For our light. A friction. Which is for the moment. Working for us more and more. Except. Delay and internal ways for the glory. All this suffering, all this trouble that we are facing is equipped, is shaping us, is helping us, prepare us for eternal glory. So don't settle down on earth because earth, the life that we live on earth, is just only temporary. Because the Bible, in the twinkling of the eye, everything will change. What about are we ready? The twinkling of the eye. We talk about rapture. What about while we are worshiping? All of a sudden, Jesus appears. Are we ready to meet our maker? Are we ready to face Jesus? Oh, face to face. Oh, so we have to think about it. Yeah. Not just to be kind of settled down, kind of be happy at this moment on earth. We have to have our mind, our heart to set for eternity. That's our place. That's our, our home. That's where we want to go. I encourage my sister. 
And remember, she said, don't worry about me. Because I know where I will go. I know it's hurt as a human being, as a loved one, brother, sister in Christ, pa family, parent, husband, whatever your family. It's hurt. But, but we thank God. Even though whatever's happening, God still have purpose. And the purpose not just only not just only halfway on earth, but for eternity. But you know, many of us, we not, we not, we not even. Our mind doesn't even open up about thinking about eternal life, eternity. We just, we just want to enjoy life on earth. <laughs> Not, nothing wrong with that. But each one of us, we have, must have our eternal goal with Jesus. Do you know, lately I've been I'm preaching through Skype, through Facebook Live. Why am I do all the time? Why I do that all the time? Is that preaching what, on Sunday in the church not enough? The reason I did be the reason why the reason I don't know when is my last moment on earth. I want to do the best that I can. I want to give. I want to use all my spiritual gift, my ability, my strength, whatever opportunity, chain that God allowed me to live on earth. To praise him, to serve him, to expand the kingdom of God, to lift up the body of Christ. One day, once a week at church is not enough. Even all of you, we need to study the word, not just come and listen to the preaching on Sunday. Worship Jesus, a believer, follower of Christ, is not only our day, once a, once a week. It has to be every single day. That we walk with God. Yes. All right? Yes. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. When I preach, I like to use different translation to help us to understand, you know, some of the biblical word. The Bible says, I will use God's word translation. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, say like this. You are extremely happy about this thing, even though you have to suffer different kinds of trouble while for a little while now. So I underline on my note, it said to suffer different kinds of trouble. Troubles with us, many trouble, many, many kinds of suffering. That as a body of Christ, as a Christian, as a chair of God, we have to go through this. All of us. If you study, see the beginning of Genesis to Revelation, and you will see God people, none of them have an easy life. You heard about Apostle Paul or the 12 apostles? None of them have an easy life. Then how many of you realize that you know that 11, these 11 apostles were killed because of the gospel, because of Jesus. Even Paul, Apostle Paul, he was killed. Mm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, you know, we think a Christian life on earth, this present time, we think of how our life is so tough and so hard, thinking about the early, in the beginning, in the early church, how those Christians, they were faced persecution. Mm. To so many of them put to death. We are serving God, living, follow Christ in America. We have such a freedom. Thinking about Christians in the Middle East. How many of them got killed? By Muslims. Mm -hmm. By ISIS. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch the movie? Did you ever watch the, the video? They just line up all the believers and shoot them like an animal. Ugh. Cut their throat off. Oh, But what about us living here? Mm -hmm. We should thank God. We should appreciate that we are living in this country. Yes. With freedom. With God protection. We should be joyful. But don't take life in granted. Mm -hmm. And everything that God bless us, we need to pull out and praise him and give him the glory. Yes. Yes. 
We can't just, you know, can we can't just sit down at the same spot in when we face a little trouble in life. But you know, sometimes we need to encourage ourselves. I speak to myself all the time. Man, I'm hurt. I'm worn. I'm tired. But sometimes in this, this moment, I have to speak to myself. It's time for me. I need to move in a different direction. I need to get out of that place. Sometimes we need to encourage ourselves. If you read in the book of Psalms, a lot of times King David, he speaks to himself. King David, he encouraged himself. Oh my soul, oh my soul, why you are look so down? Rise up and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we need that. We praise God because our God, you no, know, it doesn't matter whatever. That we are facing is God still in charge. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Don't ever think that because I'm facing financial, I'm facing a relationship problem, I'm facing a, a heart and headache and physical illness, sickness. Don't ever think that God don't know. He know. He care. He concerned. But sometimes how the way God deal, how God address the issue, not the way that we want. That's how Christian life. We come, we we worship God, we pray. When God didn't answer, we get so upset. We get so mad. We complain, God. It seems like God doesn't care. God didn't know of my trouble. It seems like I was carrying the mountain. Everything is piled up in my shoulder. Sometimes we think like that. In 1 King James, in different translation, I will read it. No, 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 not 1 King James. Um, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, this is from that Bible. The Bible says like this. This brings you great joy. Although you may have suffered for a short time. I underline short time. The Bible says we are we facing suffer, suffering for a short time. This is from the net Bible. It's not going to be for permanent. It's not going to be forever. But we thank God because the Bible says we are suffering for a short time. Do you ever experience last night some kind, I believe, last night is a heavy rain and also I believe it's some kind of storm coming. The heavy rain to pull out. It's only one hour and it stopped. So we have to think about life like that. Yes, we might face some difficulty, challenges, headache, crying, heartache, whatever it is. But the Bible says we are suffering in short term. But we praise God. But we endure. But we faithful. But when we trust in Him, that when we trust in Him, He will lead us through. All right now. It doesn't matter how we feel. It doesn't matter what circumstance speaking to us. We have to realize that God still sit on the throne, and Jesus still care for us. And the Bible says it is in First Peter chapter one, verse six in King James. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. In different translation in the uh, network talking about a short for a short time. Mm -hmm. In King James say for a season. Uh -huh. We all have a season. We all have a moment. That's why the Bible says like this. In you know the, in the, in Kiev, in the in earlier the world that we we read the Bible say there is a time for everything and every season and a season for every activity under the heaven. Everything have a season. Amen. All right. Jesus said like this in John sixteen thirty three. Say like this. Jesus said, "I have told you this thing so that." In me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Yes. Jesus said, in this world, what happened? This is the Bible. The Bible says, in this world, Jesus said, you will have trouble. Are we living in this world? Yes, sir. Or are we living in these this different planets? So don't be shocked. Don't be surprised because... Jesus said, in this world, we will have trouble. Yes. It doesn't matter where we live. 
You know, I have may I have still have a lot of blended and family love in Thailand. Some people say, oh man, I wish I could come to America. It's the best place to live. Are you sure about it? No. It doesn't matter where you live. You live in China, Russia, and Laos, in Africa, it doesn't matter. No, it's always going to be something. When we live on earth, we will have trouble. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter what culture, what you are, what, what language you speak, what background. We all will face trouble because Jesus says so. We can escape, we cannot voice it. But Jesus said that this, in him, that we can have peace. Amen? Amen. That's why so many important when we face trouble, bring our concern, everything at Jesus' feet. Yes. That's why it's very important for the prayer meeting. Thank you, Jesus. Many Christians don't take heart about prayer. They take so lightly. No wonder their heart never be at peace. No wonder they never receive their the strength to fight. Because they're not realize there's a power in prayer. Why are many Christians still weak? Because they lack the power. Worship God, serving God. I will use this word. Spiritual handicap. There's no strength, no joy. Because people take so lightly in the presence of God. Bible study, worship God. We need to take seriously. If we know don't take anything seriously, you know, it's just gonna be real routine. And this day I call religious practice. Millions of Christians. Every Sunday go to church. Mm -hmm. It just I call religion practice. practice. Religion practice is so different to have relationship with God. Religion practice is so different to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. When you have the relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can worship Him every day. Yes. You can worship every step that you walk in the movie because the Spirit of God will live in you. You don't wait until the Sunday and come to worship God. That's right. You don't wait until we have the revival, a special event, the content retreats. We don't have to wait because God Himself lives in you and me. We praise God that for that for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank now, all of us we have a moment in life. Sometimes we cry, sometimes we laugh. You know, sometimes we dance, sometimes we mourn. Mm -hmm. It's a part of life. Mm -hmm. don't, ever, don't ever think that, oh, I'm not normal. When things happen, it's a part of life. Okay. Now, I want to conclude this. What happened? Let me know that. What about, you know, I'm talking about, I give an illustration about the roller coaster. When you go up, you're joyful, you're smiling, you're, you're happy, you're waving. When you go down, you your faith, your, your, your express, your faith is so different, <laughs> different way. You're screaming, your tongue come out, everything. What about when we are down here? Our situation, our personal life, our family, our finance, our whatever it is that we're facing. This is the best way to do. First Peter chapter five, verse six, seven, say like this, humble yourself. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Right. Verse 7 says that this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Humble ourselves. How we do, we, how we humble ourselves. We obey, we submit to him. Let me share with you. For those try to solve problems, Thing through their own ability, their own strength. They don't humble themselves because they think they're smart enough. You ever see these kind of people? People think that I can handle it. I'm a grown man. I can deal with this situation. A lot of people think that they can do it, but I don't think so. Yes, God may give us ability and something to, to handle, but not everything. That's why the Bible says, humble yourself. 
Humble myself, yourself, ourselves to yes. God yes. in his mighty hand. Yes. And the world say mighty and talking about his power. Yes. Depend on God's power. Don't pray. Depend on our mind, our ability, our strength. It's not a world like that. Depend on God's power. He has enough power to deliver us. He has enough power to protect us. Submit ourselves. Humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. And what happened? The Bible says he may lift us up in the due time. This God promised. Yeah, sometimes we might doubt, you know. We be doubt. Stand firm, stand firm. We be doubt. Stand firm in faith. That, that's how Joshua said, don't turn left, turn right. Don't move sometimes. Maybe just stand still. Listen to God. Stand firm in his word, in his promised word. Whatever he say, go do it. Already. God never fell us. Not even at one time. Thank you, Jesus. I, I see I've been living God for 28 years. And I didn't realize that. And every time I was sitting without guilt to God, He never failed me. Never. Never. Submit ourselves. He will lift us up in a due time. Who's timing here? Is God timing? It's not our timing. Sometimes, you know, we believe in God, we pray. We pray for this, we pray for that. We pray for a job, we pray for a house, we pray for a car, we pray for healing, we pray for direction. We pray for many things. Our relationship, our children, whatever it is. When God is the answer, what happened? If you want to give up, we stop. The Bible says in his timing. So I would encourage us, so I'm going to stop from now. I will read one more word. First Peter chapter 5, the same word but different translation. I will be reading from L N L T. The Bible says like this. So humble yourself under the mighty God, mighty power of God. And at the right time. Are we listening? No. And at the right time. He will lift you up in honor. Whose time? God's time. God's time. Not our time. So we need to be humble ourselves. Give all your worry. In NIV say, cast all, 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 all. Not have, not self, all. Whatever is burning your mind, your heart, whatever. Give it all to Jesus. Tell Jesus like God. I can't handle this. I can't deal with this. Helping me. If you feel like you want to cry, you cry. You feel like you want to fall down, you do so. I need this. Right. You know, sometimes I feel like my heart's going to rip off. I cry, I cry. I cheer God. It's okay. I don't care. Let me tell you. I don't really care how people think of me when I come to the presence of God. Jeez. People may think, oh, you lost your mind. I don't care. If million people think of me, I've lost my mind. But you know what? As long as I am here, as long as I receive the answer from God, I don't care. Because I'm not trying to please nobody. Amen. My goal, my purpose, to worship at Jesus' feet. To enter to his presence. So I want to encourage all of us. He cares for us in the due time. He will Lift us up. Amen? Amen. Do you receive the word of God today? Yes. Are you receive the word of God yes, today? Yes, Come on, give God praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord today. So we will close with this. We will pray with you. You know, I don't like to do the tradition thing. Sometimes we always call people out to the front. But you can be at your all, at your app. Yes, yes. At your place. Yes. But the thing is, your heart, the most important. Let's stand up, please. Let's pray again. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's calm our spirit before Jesus. Let's cast out all our anxiety. Whatever is bothering you. Your mind, your heart. We don't need to carry no more. That's a purpose that we come to the house of God every Sunday. 
not just only praise and give him praise and glory, but we also bring our concern, our anxiety, our burden at Jesus' feet. That when we get out of the house of God, that we don't need to carry out. So our life can be refreshed every week that we become to the throne of grace. If we have it up, please. Hallelujah. Father God, right now, we come before you, Lord God. We stand before you, Lord God. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your mercy, Lord God. We ask for more grace, Lord God. Have mercy. Father God, according to your word, cast out all our anxiety because you care for us, Lord God. Father, this morning, this afternoon, that we lay down our burdens at Jesus' feet. That we cast out all our anxiety, Lord God. Our stress, our depression, our sickness, our financial, our children, our soul, our relationship, our future, our job. Whatever it is, Lord God. We put it down at Jesus' feet. At this moment, Lord God. Even though we are experiencing the moment of pain. Even though we are experiencing the moment of tear. Lord God, but we know you are the faithful God. You are the awesome God. We put down everything, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. And this morning, and we receive your abundant blessing. We receive the healing. We receive the victory in Jesus' name. And we receive the peace and hope, restoration, prosperity, Lord God, breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you receive the word of God, and the touch of the Holy Spirit, give God praise and say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May God go before you and lead you. God bless you all. See you Sunday. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus.